good morning everybody uh, let us start our uh, lecture today so is everybody ready for the upcoming test one on day after tomorrow is everybody ready yeah, that's good okay and people who are taking this test online or in uh, in sds or another place not do not need to come here into this regular class okay but if you do not wish to attend in test one then do not come into uh, this okay i encourage everybody to attend in test one so then you will be familiar with and by that you will study and you will prepare but in any case, if you cannot take test one, your final exam will be used to compensate the test. Okay. So anyone has any question about test one? Yes, your test will be written, open-ended question, open responsive. Please bring your pen and pencil, that's it. And eraser if you need pencil. And you are not allowed to use calculator or any device, any headphone or earbud. Okay. Find you during your test time. No matter you share anything or not. They will please be remember how to use a heading device. Something. I discuss almost the test questions, <laughs> right? Be familiar with so statement if else if. Let me do types. And precedence and associativity of an Uh, if you are given an expression two plus three modulo two, for instance, greater than five minus three times six, something like this. Okay, I don't teach them only. So you have to, you should know how to solve this. So at the end, it will give you either a true or a result, right? If you have a 50% chance, if you are to become, uh, to be right, but you will not get point for just random true or false return, even if you are correct. To show the step step by step. So we discuss medical water text. Uh, the module of has some different characteristics that. Maybe you are not familiar. Other of almost similar. But we discuss relational operators, logical operators, right? So according to our schedule, uh, so we should wrap up selection structures in this week, module uh, three. So I discussed the best structure of selection if, if else, if else, if else, if else. And we also discussed which scale break. Okay. 
let us see uh, our slides and things. Yeah, you can write pseudocode or actual code in any programming language you know, you're familiar with. Yes. Yeah, so in, in, your, in your, on your test exam sheet, like there will be a mm. question answer page. So you will have, for instance, that you can write all that. Yeah. Uh, as we grade or pseudo code, we are familiar with all of this course, okay? So whatever language you, you, you write in, that should be consistent. Do not write some code. C plus plus and another and next line in Java, another next line in C sharp. Do not combine multiple languages. Yes, stay with one language, either pseudocode or language. No. You don't need to put import statement. We will assume that when you use Eclipse, imported import statement will be added. There will be an option for pseudo. If you write pseudo code, then fine. There will be an option for pseudo. Anyone has any other question? Okay, yes. the print you just write in print okay. for java you don't you, you can write display dot out dot print but it is not actually we want to see your your logic development skill whether you understand oh, okay. So if you are screen P now, your lot is not a matter. Yes. You will be starting on handwriting code, which is not penalized for any grammatical error or any Okay. It has a huge impact. For instance, if it's not true, okay, that is false. Uh, but if your result is, is true, but if you say not true, if your answer, direct answer is true, but if you say not true, then huge difference, right? Otherwise, like for minor regular spelling mistakes or grammatical. By the way, I can teach both ways. I can teach on whiteboard. I can write all of the terms that are, that are described in the sheets on the whiteboard. Or I can demo on, on a computer with live program. Which one do you like? Whiteboard or live program? Huh? Live program? Come with one <laughs> consistent way. If I sometimes I, I can write whiteboard. Okay, so if I write on whiteboard, then general you will take time. Right? For me to write uh, and for you to take notes. 
computer i can record and you can get it another thing that i have i believe i have finished all of these uh, slides which is for our uh, selection statements go at the end if we have any okay some languages some languages do not have switch case statement like python python does not have switch okay actually you will go to i think all the we can we finished all the Okay, we discussed this for switch. This break is important, right? This break has different meaning. If you use break and or you don't use break. Okay. If you use break, then what will happen if this case after executing this statement, it will all the way out of this switch block. If you do not use break, if you do not see any break, then still it will be checking next condition. For instance, if my next condition is like this, greater than nine. We're matching, right? It is 10, then this 10 is greater than 9. For instance, if I do not have this break, then after executing the statement, it will come here and you will see if there is a match. It will check if there is a match, then it will execute the statement. But if I have this break, no matter the next statement is true or false, it will not go to the next statement. It will just go out of Break means here in an interval. Actually, in uh, in in order to write a complete program, we will use selection statement and controls looping control statement. Okay, so let us see if we can uh, start looping control statement a little bit today. And you will, there are many use of this selection and statements. Okay. In, when you develop a program, right program, for instance, how to find who a number is a prime number or not? To repeat, how to find great common divisor? Or just common multiple of two numbers or a group of then you will use we will use statement and repeat set repetition statements a lot if you find. So is anyone here is being familiar with GitHub? GitHub. GitHub. No one? Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll like to give you appreciate you. Please raise your, raise your hand. How many of you on? Yes, raise your hand too. If you know GitHub. Okay, if you know GitHub, really you are ahead. You are in advanced stage. Okay, knowing GitHub. Not required for this course, but if you know GitHub, then you're you will be advanced. Okay, but your life will not be stuck. I want to give an example. For instance, there are many people who do not know how to drive. But if you have this in this age, for instance, I live in USA. If you 
know how to drive a car. You see that your life is right. Go somewhere, need they have to wait a long time in or a train or bus, public transportation. They have a lot of limitations. But learning uh, like something is, is not difficult. Many you see that many people who have good health and strength, but they are scared. They do not uh, will to learn. To drive. They do not learn how to drive. But there are many people who are unhealthy, sick, but they are driving very, very large vehicle, right? Most of large vehicles. So it is not a matter of healthy or just mindset. Uh, so GitHub is, is a very helpful tool. Ultimately, you will learn, you have to learn. If you are in computer science or IT background, ultimately you have to learn GitHub. While working in a team or while working in a company, while go to for internship, you have to learn. So it's like GitHub is like a flash drive. Flash drive. So how many of you use Google Drive or OneDrive or, or uh, Dropbox? Everybody, I think. Is anyone here do not know how to use Google Drive or Dropbox or OneDrive? No, right? And like even if I am given when you go to seminar or somewhere, they give us free plus drive. Even if I give you free plus drive, you will not use. Not convenient, right? We can keep all of our documents on Google Drive or Dropbox or OneDrive. And but this is the wherever I go and whenever I go, if I have internet connection, I can get my data. Similarly, Dropbox is used. So yeah, uh, GitHub is used to store program and application. So say when you work in a team. There is no way that they will allow you to use a flash drive to communicate a project or program. They use drop, uh, GitHub or something. Okay, and it's, it's, you will need your everybody skill over here, I, I believe. And smart. It's two hours, I believe. You will know how to start. Using GitHub. Just you need to install Git, a small program, computer, because Git does not come uh, with the operating system. Maybe in future come. And then I want to just give you a, if you go YouTube, and if you go youtube.com, there are a lot of videos about git and git commands okay in my uh, youtube channel there are maybe 10 or how many videos there are, yeah. it's called git and github related you know there is a playlist git and github related videos just if you just 11 videos just if you watch these 11 videos it will take two hours, maybe, and if you practice, then you will know how to start storing your programs on GitHub. And your life will be easier and you will be advanced. Okay, yes. No, we are not, we are storing program. We are saving our program. How do we use Google Drive? Use OneDrive or Dropbox. We got from there, right? File over there, right? You can also, if you have skill program, you can contribute. Development. That this is this is not required. Okay. So what I'm saying is, if you go to GitHub, my repository, 
And uh, if you search for Java, this one Java programming A to G. So I have a project, this is a public project. And if you see, if you see this project, even if you do not know how to use GitHub, just download this, this one. If you download this program, this entire project, and if you see inside it, there is a SRC folder. And within this SRC folder, you see that there are many programs. Chapter 0 to chapter maybe 18, 19, 18. There are about 20 chapters. Okay, so these, there are a lot of programs. All of these programs from my book. So even if you, uh, if you, for instance, if you just copy this program. If you copy this program, select and copy, and for instance, if you go to REPL, Whatever you like. Let me create a new REPL. And that is Java. Java Switch. So if we copy a program from there and the class name should be name. Okay. For instance, I have complete code over here. I got my code over here. Okay. So if I run this program, it should run. So then you do you can do practice. Okay. For instance, this program is asking you to scan your number for your academic year. Which academic year are you in? Are you a first year or second year or third year or fourth year? So for instance, you are asked to enter your academic year. Okay, for instance, from one to four, if I say three, then press enter. So you are a student of third year. This program is giving each an example of switch a case okay. example so i'm telling many programs so in, if you the code from my book chapter this code from my book and Even if you do not use GitHub, if you download this code, you see there are several hundreds program, complete program. You can download this program and practice it, practice this. These codes are from my book. This is written in my native language, so you will not understand the statement, uh, but you will, if you get my code from this GitHub, then you can do some practice. There are a lot of projects on GitHub. You can download and you can modify and you can practice. So at this time, in order to get an internship or to get a job, you have to be advanced. Right? You will see that everywhere there will be a lot of competitors, huge competitions. So you, you have to be advanced. 
you learn some tools and technology, then you will be advanced. Okay, we have a few more minutes, so let us start. But since we will, a class, we will miss a class during our test, so let us start. Repetition statement today. Then we use repetition. You will say that uh, statement. We will also use the selection statement. There are mainly three. While loop, do while loop, and for loop. Okay. So let us try if we we can understand one of these. The reason of using a loop statement is that, uh, as we discussed, as we told that unless otherwise stated, all of the statements in a program. Executes from the beginning top to bottom one by one, right? But sometimes you may need to repeat some statements, execute some statement more than one time. Then, in that situation, instead of writing the same statement again and again and again, it is or D to write a looping statement so that as many times as we need to repeat the statement, we can do that without writing statements many times. But this purpose is while do while and for loop. While and do while are almost similar, but there is a basic difference between while and do while, and we will also discuss. So while and do while loops run undetermined, unknown numbers of iteration. Okay, so come through when we get, get an example what is meant by unknown numbers definitely it will be known at some point for who for for loop on the other hand runs a predetermined numbers of iteration so this is why sometimes people call it counting loop Okay, so for loop is the easiest. But so, have some more. So it has mainly three elements: one initial condition, a starting counter at the beginning of certain stage. Okay, which have some test to continue and make the progress forward to finishing. So let us go with an example. Start to discuss this. Uh, whereas while do while is different, so but let us go to the easiest one today. So there are about hundred slides for this. After your test, please download this slide. Before you come to next class on Monday, try to uh, do something. For now, let us do a follow. For loop is the easiest structure. 
it has an initial condition okay that initial condition is executed only one time this initial condition you can give at the beginning of the for or before and there will be a condition this for loop executes until this condition is true okay so this condition find your exit point as i said until the condition is true that means determine also your exit point and it will do an increment or we decrement for the initial value. This is called this initial initialization is called loop counter as well as this is called loop counter. Here at the end, we will be loop counting, it will be increasing or decreasing, and statement. If you have multiple statements, then multiple statement will be indented or Yes, or for us, this is value. Yes, yes. Close the block. As long as your condition is true, this statement block will be executed. This is a pseudocode format, so use for and in for. In actual programming language, for modern programming languages, you will not, not use. Sometimes we can do the initialization out before the loop start, and we can do the increment within the body, and we can also check the condition within the body. That is exceptional and different format. Let us first understand that basic format of the loop. For loop is, is doing like this. There will be an initialization and there will be condition. Okay. Until the condition is true, the uh, statement will be executed. After, after executing the block one time, it will increment or decrement the for counter. That was initialized. And once that is for it will go out of this loop. This loop will be terminated. Okay. So, are you almost done? Last minute. Okay, so this is the uh, for loop. Okay, in our next lecture, we will discuss. Okay. Thank you. And everybody have a